All right, welcome everybody to this Channel Vision Magazine webinar featuring our good friends at Quest Technology Management. It's part five in a six part series, Sales Bootcamp. In this presentation, we're going to learn how to sell technical on-call services in order to watch additional opportunities grow. I'm your moderator, Brady Hicks, the managing editor with Channel Vision Magazine, and your host today from Quest Technology Management. He is the Vice President of Sales and Partnerships. His name is Adam Burke. How are you doing today, Adam? Good, Brady. I appreciate everyone taking the time today. Thanks for having us. Well, it's going to be a good time and certainly very educational, much like the past four. Adam, I'm going to turn it over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Brady. And again, thank you for everyone who's taken some time out of your busy days. I know we're coming up on the holiday season here um, and appreciate you making the time. And for those of you who have uh, uh, been with us for the previous uh, portions of the boot camp, learning about integrated services, infrastructure, cybersecurity, and application development, um, appreciate you taking the time to do that. We, If you don't have that content, uh, we do have it in our resource library at the end of the at the end of the talk today. We'll talk a little bit about our partner portal and the resource library. All these uh, all these sessions are recorded, and these are really built to help train and understand a little bit more of how Quest goes to market for services and offerings. And uh, I'm really excited about today's topic. Technical on call support is something that we put together. Uh, coming up on five years um, as a as an offering, it's been very very well received, and I believe it is is truly a game changer in how we can help our clients address their technology needs. So when we put together this boot camp series um, talks, which technical on call support is what we call it for short here at Quest, um, was definitely a key building block I wanted to share with our with our partner community and um, something I'm I'm really excited about about going through today. So. Um, as we have we've gone through in these you know prior webinars, kind of what we're going to be covering, what is Tox? What is technical on call support, and what are some good use cases for it? This is a training exercise to understand what to look for um, and when to maybe introduce technical on call support offerings to your clients. Um, we're going to be talking about how starting small and building into larger projects is a great way to build trust with our clients, build trust with you as our partners. Um, and eventually leverage, you know, larger, very, very uh, complex part, uh, projects as, as you go forward. It always doesn't always start with a massive engagement, with a huge opportunity. Sometimes these things can start small. And talks is a great entry point starting, um, starting out to evolve into those larger, larger opportunities. We're also going to be talking about, you know, we, we came up with this about five years ago. Um, and been building on it based on uh, on on our our legacy as an organization and how can we help, but we built it again because of customer demand. And we're going to be going through the the technical you know labor shortages that we're seeing on a global level, right? All across the U.S., all across the globe. We're going to go into a little bit of that technical labor shortage that everyone from the SMB to the enterprise clients are dealing with. All of your customers are dealing with some type of a labor shortage um, that we believe talks can address certain certain aspects of. Um, so we're gonna be building some knowledge around how to expand these strategies and these conversations with your customers. We're gonna be talking about how to grow revenue, how to transition between the on-call nature of talks um, and the scheduling nature of, of staffing into other opportunities and get stickier with your clients. And then, you know, we're also gonna talk about what are your clients dealing with? What's the value proposition? What's the pain point that talks is gonna solve? Um, you're going to be, uh, you're continuing to advance your sales skills here. We're going to be doing, walking through some assessments as far as how you evaluate the conversation. And then, you know, just, just being there, being curious, as we've talked about in prior boot camps, you are trusted advisors. You've earned your place at the table to have these conversations and be curious with your customers about what they're doing, how they're addressing their labor shortages, how they're addressing their technical, their technical debt and, or people transitioning from one place to another. Be curious about that. Um, you don't have to be an expert in staffing. You don't have to be an expert in specific labor categories or skill sets or certifications. Um, with technical on-call support and with Quest as a partner, one of the things we wanna make sure you're comfortable with is you have a, an organization that's built on 42 plus years of experience that can help deliver the appropriate talent to the appropriate uh, place, time, and project. So um, that's a quick snapshot of what we're gonna be covering today. And 
As always, you got to understand why is this a need? What are people dealing with out there in the market? How is the market changing? And how can technical on-call support services uh, you know, be a proactive assistant here? So clients need support. Doesn't matter in what aspect, if it's at the infrastructure layer, the physical infrastructure layer for deploying new locations, deploying new resources at new offices, or helping people with their actual physical infrastructure, all the way through their network, through their security, and through their applications. People are moving all the time. Things are changing all the time. We live in a 24-7 world. And labor is a big, big category of that. So people need immediate support. They need to be able to access support 24-7 from a labor standpoint, from a personnel standpoint, and from a, hey, I need this resource at this location at this time to help out with this specific project. A lot of times we talk about the speeds and feeds of technology, but at the base of it, at underlying everything is people and getting the right people to the right places um, and getting them with the right skill sets to address a problem is a, is, a, is a practice in and of itself. It is a discipline in and of itself, and it takes a lot to execute and get those people there. So we help augment that for folks. We help take that off their plate. We help them get those projects done. We help them get the people in the places uh, to the places where they need to be. It can be uncomfortable sometimes, but um, a cost savings, labor uh, more often than not, depending on the industry, but most often is the largest cost that goes into any business or any operational unit. The cost of people, full-time employees, staff costs, overhead, um, a lot of you on this call are, are probably entrepreneurs and you sign the front of checks as opposed to sign the back of them. And God bless you for doing that. That builds a country and makes us powerful. Um, but labor is expensive and employing people is expensive. Um, technical on-call support can help organizations execute when maybe they're not ready to move to that next full-time employee, right? So maybe it can help them do more as they decide whether they're going to hire full-time or not. So it is a cost savings exercise. It can help people um, from a, uh, uh, a, a staffing standpoint and from a temporary project standpoint. Um, it allows organizations to plan. Uh, tech, our our on-call staffing uh, support services, our technical uh, support services schedule out every single week. We're going to go through exactly what talks is but it allows organizations to schedule out their projects and be confident that they have the resources and the people and the technical skills to attack those projects when they need to attack them. We're, you know, we're coming up on the end of the year, end of Q4 for a lot of us, people are planning into 2024. They're getting those projects out there. They're figuring out, hey, how are we gonna tackle this? What's priority one? What's priority two? What's priority 10? Um, technical on-call support is something that can give them the confidence to execute on those projects and be like, you know what? I have the resources, I have the engineers, I have the skill sets, I have the people I can deploy out on site to get this done. And it can give them the ability to do long-term planning and have that peace of mind so they can focus back on, on, what they're, on what they're dealing with today. And it gives them the ability to scale, right? Quest deploys resources globally. We have people in Australia, we have people in the South Pacific, we have people in, 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 in the EU, in the UK, We've deployed technical on-call resources globally. It helps organizations get resources where they need them, when they need them, with the skill sets that they need. So it's a huge, um, it's a huge uh, uh, force multiplier for organizations that are trying to do more with what they already have on staff today. Um, wanted to bring some data to the conversation as far as you know what are the most on-demand jobs and what it's costing the global economy by 2030, as far as lost production um, and, and, and lost revenue generated, right? So we're at about $8.5 trillion um, in efficiency losses based on the labor shortage just in the technology field, okay? So um, we're, we're losing skilled labor. A lot of people are talking about AI and how it's gonna replace a lot of jobs. And that's absolutely true. And just for those who are taking notes, I'm doing it on all these. I made it 13 minutes into the webinar before saying AI. Um, so that that is going to change some things, but it's also going to open up a lot of new demand for laborers that for labor and skills that are going to advance that that type of automation. So we saw this before. It happened. Automation is nothing new. Machine learning is nothing new. We're constantly evolving, um, and that's that's going to happen. But Right now, projections by 2030 is there's a significant loss 
um, in, in from a labor standpoint coming up on 2023. The most, these are the top five uh, per Gartner. Uh, these are the top five um, roles that are most in demand and also um, the largest gap uh, for, for, for labor right now, right? So top of the list, again, artificial intelligence, machine learning engineer, people who can help develop that automation. Um, AI is fantastic, but you still got to point it in the right direction and you got to apply it to the appropriate data and the appropriate data classification. So people in this world, very, very high demand. Um, uh, we talked a little bit about application development last week. Huge demand for this. Cybersecurity specialists, uh, app dev. We talked about DevOps last week. Uh, cloud architects, helping people understand where they're moving their on-premise workloads to an Azure or AWS or Google instances, how that's going to actually work. Uh, it's not just a lift and shift. There are different rules. Yes, it's a computer somewhere, but it still has different rules of how that's configured. So you need people who can help you do that. Um, and then data scientists, right? How are you categorizing your data? How are you uncovering trends within data? How are you manipulating those data fields to get the most out of them? How are you seeing basically all that, that data is the new gold, data is the new oil. Um, how are you getting the most out of that? So these are the top five demand jobs. And all of these jobs, all of these roles, are part of technical on-call support. And there's others as well. So what is technical on-call support? Technical on-call support was really born out of um, about five or six years ago. Uh, Quest has been doing managed services for 22 plus years, 23 years now, started in 1999. Um, what we found was we have service managers that are assigned to every single one of our accounts. And a service manager is someone who is their responsible for supporting that account from an operational perspective. Hey, tickets are open, escalations need to be happened, uh, resources need to be coordinated. That's their operational go-to person for our client. Um, our managed services, like everything, can sometimes fall into different silos. It could be cybersecurity managed services. It could be application monitoring managed services. It could be video surveillance. It could be any type of vertical within our managed services footprint. It could be infrastructure could be hosting, serv hosting um, servers or data center operations. But what happens is when you have a contract with a client for a specific vertical, sometimes that client can only think of you as, well, those are my firewall people, or that's my data center that I work out of, or Quest does a great job in data center, but I have a SQL issue that I'm dealing with this weekend, and they're kept up all night dealing with a SQL issue, and then they come in and they talk to their service manager on Monday, during their cadence call and, hey, how's it going, Bob? How you doing? How was your weekend? That client would mention to our service manager the challenge that they had around SQL or the challenge that they had around a patch uh, that they were trying to update a Windows systems or roll out new patches to their endpoints. And we weren't necessarily supporting that vertical for that client. So they didn't necessarily think of us to help there. Well, Quest has over 250 engineers on staff in, in our team supporting our professional and managed services deployments. And then we've been around about 40 years. So we staff hundreds of individuals all over the country in different diverse skill sets. And we have top-notch networking capabilities for finding and placing the right people. So when a service manager hears of a customer struggling with an issue that we could easily address, we decided, hey, Let's build out a standalone offering. Now, all of our managed services come with this offering. Every single managed service client that we have has access to technical on-call support as part of their agreement. But we decided, hey, this is a need in the, in the marketplace right now where organizations are struggling with different, different upgrades, different changes, different migrations, different types of services that they need help with. We should make this a standalone offering whether or not they're a managed service client or not, let's make it a standalone offering. So that's that's how we created it. And what it does is it allows clients to access our entire bench of engineers and our entire extended network for helping organizations get talent when and where they need it. This could be for all sorts of different things, but this, is, this was really the creation of talks, of technical on-call support. This helps organizations get people and labor with the skill sets they need where and when they need it. We had one client out of the East Coast, large Fortune 500 organization, 
um, did some uh, works in, in the in the rail um, in the rail industry, and they had a, what was a Cisco 9K switch, um, Cisco 9000 switch in a town called Perth, Australia. They called us on Thursday, and there was an upgrade that needed to be implemented on this 9K switch in Perth, Australia. Um, for this Fortune 500 company. We had recently got involved with them to help with some of their Cisco work and configuration and management and support. And they said, hey, I know it's a bit of an outlier. I know you guys are headquartered in California and have you know 16 locations around the United States, but could we need a, we need a resource, a CCIE, you know, top level Cisco engineer um, to go on site in Perth, Australia uh, for a couple of days next week to help with this upgrade, this migration, and this basically, I think they were doing some some firmware and some some uh, uh, some high level work on the 9K switch in Perth, Australia, at a rail yard. They call us on a Thursday, and they said, "Yeah, you know, kind of our last ditch effort here." And the power of technical on call support, we made two phone calls, got a resource coordinated, and had a senior Cisco CCIE trusted vetted person we'd worked with before on-site helping that customer at their location. Now, if you're of the mindset, it's going to get a little bit into the a little bit into the mindset here for a minute. So, you know, forgive me. If you're of the mindset that I can never help someone unless they're a full W-2 uh, employee of a company and I know them and they're 100 percent on my staff and I'm paying their paycheck every month and they're I, I, I you know they're fully vested in my 401k plan. That's the only way I believe to help clients. Don't worry about talks. It's not for you. If you've taken an Uber, if you've gone on Fiverr, if you've uh, contracted in any way in the gig economy, Grubhub, you've had a stranger deliver your food to your house, but you don't trust a, a Cisco CCIE to go out and help you with an upgrade, you probably have a longer talk offline. But those are that's the nature of the economy and that's the nature of what we're seeing the opportunity to help people with complex technology problems yes we have our our, our team of engineers and fantastic top-notch individuals that help us but we also have been around for 42 years and we know a lot of people we trust and vet them and we keep them on our team um, as as trusted contractors and they go out and they help us execute internationally very powerful Again, if you have the mindset that that's not the way you want to do business, God bless, good luck. But if you do want to work with us on that type of a thing, technical on-call support is very, very powerful. So it's a simple process. It's a $5,000 minimum of initial funding, right? That gets them access to the, uh, to the on-call support, scheduling resources, and that's their initial bucket of funds. We have some clients that start out with five, some that can start out with 50. It's really based on how much they think they're going to use ad hoc support, but it changes the game and gives them a lot of additional um, additional assets to use and, and deploy uh, all sorts of resources. Um, it's a very simple process. They can open the ticket or they can send in an email and they have a dedicated service manager who is their go-to person. So like in that Perth, Australia, they called uh, example, they called their service manager on a Thursday we had a resource out in Perth, Australia, out in the rail yard, helping with a Nexus 9K on Monday. Extremely powerful game changer for any industry. I don't care if they're SMB, middle market, or enterprise. If you can figure out how to get the right people to the right place with the right skill set, you're, you're a powerful entity within the technology world, and you can really help people get, get problems solved. Um, the reasons people are engaging Quest with talks agreements. And these are some of the top ones. Um, like we mentioned before, Quest is a 24 seven shop. We are a very security, cybersecurity oriented organization. Um, and oftentimes people will call us either existing technical on call support uh, clients or people who don't know us yet. And they, they have some type of a ransomware or some type of an emergency event going on, right? So Tox is typically a scheduled service. Um, but it does allow for emergency support, right? The most, the most oftentimes people are calling us to schedule services, but oftentimes they all are also calling us in emergencies, asking for help. And we've built the contract to support scheduled resources remotely, scheduled resources on site, and 
oh, oh shoot, break glass moment emergency services as well. It's all documented in there. All the different labor categories are all documented in those those three areas. These are some of the top reasons people are engaging with us, right? Um, they they have a ransomware event. They have a, a specific site that's down. Um, they need help configuring a new, turning up a new circuit. Um, they need help rolling out a new patch or or um, updating their end users. Um, some people are still, hey, I got to get a technician out on site to help with my um, uh, help with this rollout or just help with you know physically unboxing and deploying iPads. We had one hospital group out of Virginia. They they hired they hired us for a talks um, uh, engagement. Um, they were rolling out new crash carts at about 40 different hospitals in the area, and they needed technicians. We we put together a team of five under a tox agreement to roll out uh, tablets. I believe they were like an iPad type of tablet to all the crash carts. Uh, basically, what our team did was all they did was they unboxed them, they plugged them in, they connected them to the existing uh, wireless network field that was being broadcast from the crash carts, and they validated that they were online. And then the service provider who is providing the actual service for those those crash carts took it over from there. But that saved that hospital group the, the struggle of coordinating resources at 20 different hospitals, um, coordinating assets and teams and putting together a little, a little team to go get done. We took care of all that for them. Um, and they basically would call in, open a ticket and say, hey, we're ready to go to hospital XYZ. We need a crew of five to go and knock out this task list. Can we schedule resources? Yep, roger that. We They had the bucket of funds. We debited from that retainer and we dispatched the team and, and knocked it out for them. So huge cost benefit, um, huge, uh, you know, um, the, the coordination of getting that done uh, kind of was alleviated from the team. And uh, we just helped, you know, help with a simple rollout. It could be as simple as unboxing and plugging in all the way up to advanced configuration of firewalls, or you know, complicated CCIE type Cisco engineering work at a at a rail yard in the middle of Perth, Australia. So that's what we're seeing. Um, again, a little bit of data, just so you guys don't think I'm just you know uh, making stuff up out here. You know, and 84% of all statistics are made up. Um, according to Gartner, right? The talent shore is a, basically it's a it's an adoption killer, right? It's it's slowing down people adopting new technology services things that that we're as a community helping to sell out there. So if it's an SD-WAN rollout, if it's SASE, if it's a new um, SOC as a service deployment, if it's any type of uh, advanced technology services out there, the tech shortage is a barrier to entry for helping organizations adopt and bring on new technologies. So all of us on this call who are sales folks in the channel, we're helping organizations select new technologies, select the latest and greatest, things out there and how to implement them, the tech shortage is a barrier for that, right? Um, it, it means that, you know, that it's delaying um, getting those new technologies implemented. It's creating shelfware where people bought the latest and greatest SIM technology or, they're gonna, or, or endpoint protection or new cybersecurity uh, feature, and they don't have anyone to manage it. They don't have anyone to implement it. They don't have anyone to help configure it. So talks and technical on-call support Staff augmentation can get the talent to the right place for the right resources um, and, and, and help people move that forward, right? So those new tools, those new features um, that are being released all the time, it's hard to keep up with everything that's coming out, all the new, everything that's coming out all the time from, I don't care if it's Microsoft or Cisco or um, any, of the, any of the major, you know, Google uh, Google's coming out with new stuff all the time, AWS is coming out with new features, um, Azure, you know, new replication, new workspaces, all that good stuff. They're not able to adopt it. They don't have the people to adopt it. So um, that's, you know, talks can really help with that. So why, so talks is, you know, $5,000, right? That's our minimum. I mentioned that earlier. No one's, no one's paying their mortgage with a $5,000 transaction or, um, you know, buying a new car. Um, so what? Right. So, so why talks? Why does that matter? Um, why I love talks, and from a from a culture standpoint, we you, you've heard our tagline, you've seen our trademarks. You know, Quest is an organization. What we truly believe is we're an IT organization, and how can we help? Talks was created 
from that initial need of organizations needing help with diverse skill sets, whether it's physical infrastructure, application development, cybersecurity, just getting bodies on site to help on you know help help get things deployed. How can we help? Um, and we have the technical teams to help deploy that. We have the project management teams to help resource coordinate and deploy right people to the right places. But it also evolves and gets you closer to your client, knowing what they're working on. So you learn about the things that they're struggling with. And then when you learn about what they're struggling with, you get to understand what their outcome is that they're looking to achieve, right? So you understand the pain that they're going through. Why are they going through that pain, right? Why are they doing that upgrade? Why are they deploying that new site? Why did they lose that resource who used to help this for them, help to help manage this for them? You get to get a little bit closer to your client and understand what, you know, what they're dealing with. And then um, one of the most powerful things about, I believe, technical on-call support and having Quest as a partner in that account with you is it's like a choose your own adventure book with unlimited chapters, right? There's a million different ways that you can pivot from understanding that pain point to helping your client with different services, offerings, and features that can really address what they're trying to achieve. So maybe they're, maybe you're, maybe they're bringing you on site to help with a configuration or an upgrade or a patch, but they, they mention in the, in that, in that initial engagement that they really aren't doing an effective job monitoring their systems or they're, they're going through with some pain points with their cybersecurity insurance and there's a gap before they can actually get their new policy. And maybe you can help out with monitoring, alerting, or managing certain aspects of their, of their stack. It gets you embedded at every layer of their environment because you can address help or provide labor at every layer of the environment. You could be at the forefront of understanding when they're going to build that new campus environment when they're going to upgrade their, their switch stack, when they're going to, what they're dealing with from, a existing, from an existing managed service provider who maybe isn't quite taking care of them the way they used to. So you hear a lot more about what challenges they're dealing with and you can pivot into all sorts of other services. Now, one thing that, we're talking a lot about technical on-call support, one thing that technical on-call support is not, is it's not help desk. That's something that people will sometimes blur the lines on. So, and just from experience for the last five years, you don't want to blur the lines between help desk and technical on-call support. Quest does run a 24 seven security operations, network operations and help desk service, right? We do, we have help desk deployed for thousands of users all around the globe, right? It's 24 seven and we can help organizations after hours, uh, graveyard shift, all that kind of stuff but Tox is not help desk. So just a quick nuance discussion there around help desk. Help desk is I'm supporting end users who are gonna call in and they're having trouble launching an application. They forgot their password for the 27th time. Um, they don't know how to open exchange. They don't know they're at a hotel and they don't know how to log in to their the wireless. They can't authenticate their VPN. Help desk is end user stuff, right? That's for end users, people who are out there working in the business, but not necessarily part of the IT team. Technical on-call support is a staffing safety net resource coordination for the IT department or for the company that has the responsibility for the IT services. So it's a scheduled service. It's, hey, I need this resource at this time. Now, like everything in IT, we are available for emergency break fix. There is emergency with built within that, but it's not help desk. So like if a if you're talking to a client about technical on-call support, technical on-call support is scheduling resources to attack specific tasks and lists that need to get checked off the IT person's plate. Maybe uh, update their up, update their their firmware on their backup technology. Maybe they got a new version of Veeam coming out. Maybe they got a new uh, update that needs to go into their FortiGate firewalls, whatever it is. Talks is, hey, I need, a, I need a resource to help me attack that issue. Help desk is for end users. 100% Quest does it. And we do a great job and we can help you build out a custom uh, help desk or support desk for your, for your user community, but it's not Talks. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, and then 
Incident response. Again, not a nice thing to talk about, not a nice situation, but incident response is real. Um, malware, ransomware, people are getting in trouble all the time. If you're the organization that's helping uh, your clients attack those specific tasks, right? And you're the go-to person. When something goes wrong, if and when something goes wrong, you're available. You've let them know, hey, I know we've, we've worked with talks. We've had Quest in here to help from a technical on-call support standpoint to help with these, you know, these, these updates, these patches or deploying people on, on site. Hey, look at the bottom of that agreement. There's also the 800 number and there's also the break glass IR at questsys.com uh, distribution that I use, they can email, they can message, they can call 24 seven to help from an incident response standpoint. So talks is a $5,000 IR or $5,000 tox agreement can easily transition into helping save that organization and rebuild them and get them back operational. We talked a little bit about that during the boot camp for cybersecurity. Um, the idea between taking notes and doing forensics and and saying, hey, hey, whose fault was this? That's what a lot of the cybersecurity insurance providers are going to do from an IR perspective versus, no, no, I got to get, I, yes, I know I got compromised. I know we got in trouble. We got help for ransom. I got to rebuild my company and get back in an operational state. So that's where Quest comes in. That's what we help do. We absolutely can help with the forensics too, but getting people rebuilt and operational is what we're keyed in on. And talks is a seed for that. It's a, it's a starting point for that if that event ever happens. The other thing that you can transition to, huge opportunity and a real differentiator that Quest has. And I think one of our biggest powers that gives us an amazing resource pool for our talks agreements and for our talks team um, is long-term staffing. We've, we've been doing this for, for 40 plus years. We know a lot of great people. Organizations need to hire people and they also need to staff roles longer term. So Quest, not talks, but it does transition to what's called staff augmentation, staff aug, where we're placing candidates for long-term six, you know, three, six, 12 month engagements where that resource, that person, that engineer is working at the direction of that client as a member of their team directly. And we help pl place them or help them get hired. And what's different than us versus a lot of like staffing agencies that you might be familiar with is where they'll throw like 20 or 40 resumes at someone. We keep these people and these resources and these engineers and these skill sets. We keep them in our environment. We keep them deployed and actionable and working on projects. We know who is actually functional at the command line and who's just padding their resume with, with, with certs that they've never actually executed on. And we technically screen people before placing them in staff aug roles. So technical on-call support can be an entry into helping your enterprise mid-market companies with actual staffing roles. And that's a billion dollar industry in and of itself. Huge, huge opportunity. Long-term staffing, staff aug, contractors, getting those people placed at these re at these organizations to help with longer term projects. Um, te technical on-call support is a starting point for that. So huge opportunity. You can pivot a million ways from talks. You can pivot to cybersecurity. You can pivot to infrastructure. Um, you can pivot to DR conversations and business continuity. Um, or you can pivot to longer term staff aug roles or fractional, you know, people talk about virtual C, uh, chief information security officers, those types of fractional services for, hey, I just need a expert for 20 hours a week or something like that, or 20 hours a month. You can pivot a lot of different ways. It's a great starting point if you're getting into the, into the professional services and helping people with projects. Um, I kind of already, you know, uh, buried the lead on this one by going through some of this, but um, on the on the previous slide, but it does have specialization. It does help organizations do more with their existing environment. It gets you again. It gets you closer to your clients. It gets you closer to understanding what they're dealing with, and can lead to you know a lot of other projects. So these are these are some of the top reasons. I think I already kind of rolled through through most of them. Um, but again, you know, this whole idea of it's it's a comprehensive portfolio of of resources. We get called all the time. I don't know all these resources. I don't know all this technology. We have an amazing team that when you call in as a partner or when you open up an opportunity as a partner and say, hey, I'm looking for this resource at this location at this time, 
can you help me? Um, we have a, we have a great recruiting team. We have fantastic people who pull out all sorts of different skill sets and folks from internationally, um, local resources, all the good stuff. So very powerful tool. Um, it helps organizations, you know, do more with what they have and it's, it's always accessible. It's always there. It's a, it's, I, I hate to use the word safety net, but a lot of organizations don't know who to call when they, when they come across a challenging scenario, they don't know who to call. Um, when they need help with a specific technology. This can be specific to things. We've seen some organizations just, just sign on for talks, a couple of schools and um, uh, departments in, in, uh, in, in a couple of states that we work with. They just needed help with Microsoft. They just wanted help with their Microsoft suite. Now, talks gives access to all sorts of things, right? Every type of technology out there from audio, visual, to full SaaS applications, to backup technology, to whatever you know you need in the, in, in the platform, um, Talks can give you access to that. But the customer needed help with Microsoft. They wanted to use us as a little bit of an intermediary between Microsoft Premier support that they were kind of contracted to have, and hey, I, I need someone I can call who's an expert in these three aspects of the Microsoft skill, uh, suite, and I need someone I can depend on. Um, and not go through the you know the different escalation process, you know with with the um, with the with the software provider. So we acted as an intermediary, and we built out a talks agreement specifically around that. So as it, or you can keep it broad. Again, you know clients are going to kind of put you in boxes. They're going to think of you in those different ways. Um, what one of the most powerful things about talks is it can help kind of crack you out of that of that specific box that maybe your clients put you in. Right, you can you can expand into other offerings, into other services, and other capabilities um, through a technical on-call support and through these these types of uh, these types of engagements. So I know we went I know we went through a lot. Wanted to save some time for um, for some Q and A. This is always a good conversation. I love talking about talks. Um, but there's you know the key takeaways is there's a massive shortage in technical resources, regardless of the industry. I don't care if it's SMB, middle market, enterprise state and local, um, people are struggling to keep technical talent engaged. They're struggling to have the right people at the right places um, and at the right time. Uh, and this technical on-call support can absolutely help with that. Um, small engagements lead to massive wins. Um, not, to, not to pound the chest too much or, or beat the chest or anything like that, because I, I kind of hate that in the channel. Um, but uh, I'm going to do it anyways. Um, we won some serious um, seven, eight figure deals in the last 12 months. Um, and they all, and from the channel, so a, agent led um, significant, significant um, uh, wins for, for our organization. Um, and they all started, they all started with a very, very small engagement. Right, so we've we had an application development win that started with just a, a simple SQL engagement to help them from a technical on-call support standpoint evaluate how their SQL their Microsoft SQL uh, database was functioning. We did a simply, I think it was like a thirty-five hundred dollar engagement, well well north of three point five million dollars now for that one project. We had a, a managed firewall opportunity that um, was massive. It started out just with a simple uh, checkup, simple checkup, simple engagement to understand, hey, how are you configured? It, 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 it transitioned into a massive, a massive opportunity just by being there, helping out with that engagement um, and, and being available for that to, to transpire. I'm going to go a little, little bit on the, on the woo-woo side here for a minute. Um, and so I apologize about the, the consciousness conversation I'm about to have, but if you don't think you can address those large issues because you only have resources in this vertical or this vertical or maybe this skill set, you're never going to get the at bat for the big one. So it's okay to start with the small thing. It's okay to start with the small engagement, but know through technical on call support and through having the right partners in your in your kit bag, you can address major, major multi-million dollar opportunities out there. I don't care that they're a, a Fortune 500 or a Fortune 100 company. They're struggling to figure this stuff out the same as everybody else. It's They're not different just because they have a, a, a 
you know, a ticker on the stock market exchange. There's still people who are struggling to find resources and skill sets to execute on a deliverable. Doesn't matter the size. So if you start small with an organization, you develop that, that muscle memory of, yeah, I can help with that. Yeah, I can help with that. Yep, let's go get that. Figure that out, have great partners, and you can transition to massive deals. Not because, you know, you know some woo-woo secret talk or whatever, but it is because you have the people on it that, that can help you execute and you know that you have, you know, have have the ability to to grow that practice. So Tox is a um I I believe Tox is a is a is a representation of that confidence, of that ability to help execute across multiple different areas of delivery. Um, and it is a little bit of our secret sauce from a quest perspective. This is a big differentiator for us. So um not sure if it's a smart thing or a dumb thing, but I am kind of telling everybody out there who's listening, this is how we execute. This is how we differentiate. This is a little bit of our secret sauce. Um, and they, you can start with a small engagement and these things can blow up um, and, and become massive, massive deals. Um, and people are always looking for flexibility. They're always looking for people who can be responsive, deliver quickly and um, and, and come on site and help um, get things done. So um, that's kind of the kind of the snapshot of technical on-call support. Um, I know we've got a couple minutes left in the in the segment here. So Brady, I don't know if we have any questions or anyone had anything that they wanted to, anything they wanted to go over, um, but we definitely can open it up for anyone that maybe has a question. Well, first of all, thank you, Adam. That was incredible. Uh, just to summarize for everybody listening, uh, you've helped us learn all about client engagement, strategic deployment, client client relationship building, revenue multipliers, and of course, upsell and cross-sell. Uh, before we get to the questions though, Adam, uh, would you like to remind our attendees maybe how they can reach out and get more information? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so I would love, I know everyone loves partner portals. Personally, myself, I love partner portals. Nothing more than logging into a nice, fresh, clean partner portal that the, you know the web developers spend a lot of time on and you have to have your username and password and you have to log into it and you forget it and then you can't log into it and register a deal. We got rid of that, okay? We have no no login, no username, no password. I promise it's not a pain to use. Um, if you go to our page um, at, at questsys.com uh, and just go to the partner tab, uh, you can launch right into the partner tab. Um, you can register an opportunity there very cleanly, very simply, and it has all of our resources on it as well. So it has resources about technical on-call support. We got all sorts of videos. If you if you like the talk today and you want to listen to any other ones, it's under the resource tab in our videos for our under our partner um, program. If you like podcasts, we do a little podcast um, every week, um, and all of those resources are in the partner page. So, partner page right here. Uh, this is our eight hundred number and our partner portal. Um, if you have any questions or you want to have any type of uh, discussion or anything you heard today, please reach out. We love talking to partners around putting things together and, and working together. So this is how. Brady, this is how the team can contact us. Well, perfect. It really looks clean and crisp, which is really a good thing. Uh, yeah, let's jump into the questions. And by the way, thanks to uh, to Darcy Baker as well, who's in the background kind of fielding questions and answering what she can, uh, just because we're getting very close on time here. Uh, let, let me start off with this one, Adam. How can I effectively market technical on-call on -call services uh, if I want to differentiate myself from a competitor or competitors? Um, well, I don't, I don't think there's a, there's a lot of technical on-call support out there right now. I think there's a lot of different stories, um, that, that are floating around. I, I think we, we do really do have a unique offering in the sense that, um, we're not afraid to go on site and we're not afraid to, uh, find skill sets that might be harder to track down, um, than just the, the, you know, the main, the main four, like, Hey, I, you know, Cisco, Microsoft, um, VMware and, uh, and Salesforce or whatever the top applications are out there. Um, we find we can get creative. We can help organizations find specific talent. Um, and uh, it is it is a, it is a it is a very very unique offering. It does take some time to have that conversation. So it's we have a we have a little video um, on our website that if you ever want to use that as hey I got a great partner who can help augment what you're doing. Um, send them the, send them the video. Keep it. Keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, and then, if they're open to having a dialogue about it, I love having a couple of stories in my back pocket around how other clients used it. 
So on our resource page as well, there's a couple of different use cases of people who have used it in the past and how it's kind of helped them. So um, from a differentiating standpoint, I would have a couple of stories uh, in the bag that you can that you can uh, express to your client and tell them like, hey, I just I just met this company organization named Quest, um, and here's a here's a case study of you know a similar organization to yours. Um, or a similar example of, of how they've helped an organization. Um, people love stories. So I, I, I would keep a couple of stories close. Okay, perfect. Um, let's talk integration for a second, Adam. Uh, how can one integrate on-call services into their current service offerings? Um, so if you're, if you're a consultant or if you're an advisor or if you're an MSP or a VAR, um, or anyone who is in the technology space or helping clients with technology, um, you can basically tie in talks as an extension of your capabilities or something to offer your client as a, as a, as a service broker. So we're okay working with our partners um, from a talks perspective as well. We have a lot of great partners out there who do amazing things in application development or cybersecurity or other features, but they don't, maybe they don't have physical infrastructure folks who can go on site. Maybe they, maybe they do a great job of aggregating and putting a bunch of circuits together for international deployments, but they need someone who they can call on to dispatch for DMARC extensions, or they need someone who can manage the firewalls at the circuits once they deploy them, you know, or they can do that initial configuration. Talks can be used um, really as an augmentation tool to where your services stop. So if you're, if you're a consultant and you're helping people select technology, you can bring us in to be, help be like a safety net for whatever you sell them. I don't care if you're selling them Ring Central or 8x8 or Cisco or um, a new wireless deployment or a new SD-WAN deployment. You can bring in talks to help as a safety net in the event that the managed service provider that you've already consulted with them on or that their current provider doesn't have the skill set that may be needed to um, to help with that. We had one partner sold a, sold a nice nice Cato deal, fantastic Cato deal, um, sold it to about, there's about 60 sites. But for whatever reason, that client wanted to leverage some Meraki capabilities on their internal part of the network. And they had to get those two systems talking to each other. They had the Cato deployment all rolled out. Everything was everything was baked. It was all it was all out there, but they still wanted to have some communication from the SD WAN platform and the Cato services into that Meraki core switch architecture. Cato didn't have someone who was going to do that. The, you know, the, the Cisco team had already sold the Meraki switches. They necessarily didn't have a, a PS resource who was ready to jump in and start translating Cato instances and things like that. So we have multiple CCIEs on staff. We work on project integration all the time. So that client used the talks agreement. It was actually the partner, the partner who sold the Cato instance. Um, that partner ha had a talks agreement with us and brought our senior level engineer in there to help their client wrap up that project. So you can really use it, use it as a tool um, to augment what you're doing today. And we, we love to partner with a lot of people think like, well, that, isn't that person a competitor of yours? Like, well, yeah, if you don't partner with people who compete with you in other aspects, the, the, the partner field gets pretty tight. So um, we, we love to partner. We know how to stay in our swim lane. And uh, that's how we that's how we built out our, our practice. OK, cool. Um, let's talk best practices, Adam. Uh, this person wants to know what are some best practices for selling on call services? Um, so ask, asking asking where, you know, um, well, Depends where you're at with your customer. If you're if you're at the place where you know you know their their staff or you know their how they've been doing things for a while, um, and you see something change, you see people move on, you see people transition. Um, they you know maybe they they have the yeah there's a a reduction in force that's going on a little bit around things right now. Um, you can you can ask you can ask if something like technical on call support could be a benefit. Um, I really don't think there's a company out there. I don't care if they have 50 users or 5,000 users, um, that, that couldn't use some, some assistance with, with technical support outside of their current capabilities. 
Um, so asking those questions, I'd be curious, how are you dealing with staffing issues? Hey, I, you know, again, tell stories. Hey, I saw XYZ company just had a reduction in force their IT department. Um, how are you guys dealing with, with labor right now? How are you guys dealing with, with capabilities? Do you have it? Do you have everybody you need? If you could wave your magic wand, do you have every person you need right now? Or would you, you know, would it be helpful to, you know, have another developer, another sysadmin, um, you know, what does that look like? Be curious, keep asking questions. No, not a problem apparently to keep asking questions. Well, uh, not the, yeah, I mean, not you, I mean, with your client, but I, yeah, the, the Q, I, Q and A is great too. I was making a joke, uh, but but this person specifically wants to know about uh, those who need something simple, like a, like a hard drive replaced or, or something similar that requires um, on-site visits. What sort yeah. of advice would you give? Well, so the advice I'd give would be get the talks in place and let them know, walk through the process of opening um, a dispatch request um, for an on-site you know, scheduled maintenance or on-site scheduled service. Um, technical on-call support, if it's an emergency, hey, I, you know, we got, we got a, a, a server that's hard down and we got to get someone to dispatch, dispatch out there ASAP. Technical on-call support gives you the ability to, to open up an emergency request, right? So same day, same day on-site dispatch, it for us is an emergency, right? That's, hey, I got to get same day out there, you know, um, get someone out there. Then, you know, that people are, they're going to have to deal with that one way or the other. Either they lose productivity for the day because they can't get someone out there. They pay for an emergency dispatch, right? From someone like us to go get it done. Or they take time out of their day to, to drive out there or to drive to the site or to fly someone in and they lose the productivity of doing something else. Like there's no free lunch here. Um, they got to make a business decision. Technical on-call support is a, is a business decision, but it's a force multiplier in the standpoint that it gives them the resources to coordinate that they don't have. They don't have this capability in-house. They don't have the ability to dispatch people locally or get people scheduled and get them out there without pulling them off of other, other services or other things. So if they're lean and they're having, they're having a hard time getting people to where they need to be, talks can, talks can really help them out. Okay, just a couple more here, Adam. Uh, real quick, uh, how can offering on-call services kind of create other business opportunity out there? Uh, well, I, it, it it ties you in with the with the problems that they're having. So there there's the idea of the Boy Scouts and the always prepared and always kind of got their project list of the ten things they're going to be doing. And then there's the reality of most people in the middle market um, and even in the enterprise, they're trying to survive the next wave of of challenges coming their way. Um, so as much as we all like ourselves to be, you know, pretend to be thought leaders and all that kind of nonsense, most people are just dealing with things that are coming with them and trying to incrementally plan as best they can. Talks helps gives you, talks helps give your clients the ability to deal with those things in a flexible manner, but then it also gives you the ability to look at, oh, hey, you, you consistently have this issue with you need to dispatch someone out to these locations to help to patch your end users or patch this. Let's talk, let's talk about, let's talk about remote patching services. Let's talk about remote monitoring services. Let's talk about, hey, you're 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 paying every month to have you know this system up updated or you're having to dispatch people all over. Let's talk about a different way to do that. So you can be a little bit of that, you can provide a little bit of that leadership. But talks and having that engagement is going to give you an inside view as opposed to, you know, having to have those, you know, multiple meetings and kind of peel the onion back to get to the real business outcome. You're part of the, you're part of the outcome because you're helping solve the immediate problem, but the immediate problem might be caused from something else. And that something else is the larger opportunity that you only get visibility of if you're in the room. Okay, cool. And one last question on this end. Uh, what are some of the pitfalls that you might encounter that you want to avoid when you're selling on call services? Um, no, great question. So you want to avoid you want to avoid mixing it with help desk. That's the I'd say that's the biggest um, help desk or you want to avoid mixing it with the idea of monitoring, management, or proactive support. 
talk talks is the ability to schedule resources and get people and technology to the places where they need it. Um, it's not a proactive, it's not a proactive offering. So if you, you got to really understand, um, and it's not, it doesn't support end users. So don't, don't blend it with help desk and don't blend it with the idea of proactive SLAs or dispatch support around like you ordered a, you know, you ordered a, a new Cisco firewall or ASR with, with same day business support for, for an optic. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a different thing. Um, we absolutely do that from a managed services standpoint where we monitor, manage, and maintain things, but that's the risk. You don't, you don't want to blur those lines. Talks is a short-term staff augmentation, right people, right place, right time, right skill set um, type of a model that helps people attack projects in a flexible way. It's not help desk and it's not monitoring services. So just don't, don't blend those lines and you're good. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this webinar. Uh, Adam, first of all, I want to thank you. Uh, Adam is the Quest Technology Management Vice President of Sales and Partnerships. Again, thank you so much, Adam, for the time. Absolutely. Appreciate everyone making the time today. Uh, and now from all of us at Channel Vision Magazine, uh, for Adam Burke and our good friends at Quest Technology Management, thanks so much for attending and have an amazing day. Take care.